on board the ship who's the second in command. He had uniforms made for his kids and in particular his daughter who's three years old. Yeah, she, she came rocking in my cabin and uh, wearing epaulets dressed just like a mini captain. Um, that was probably the last thing that made me laugh out loud. It was, it was just the cutest thing I think I've ever seen in my life. You know, right after they um, had those uniforms made for the kids, mm -hmm. they made uniform for Bugs. So she's got her captain's uniform too, which is just <laughs> mind-blowing. <laughs> I take her up to the bridge and I used to bring her up and have the guests. Um, we do an inside access tour on the ship so mm -hmm. the guests can come up to the bridge. Um, and I could guarantee, because she has about 27,000 followers, oh, wow. so, um, you know, a lot of times people will come and say, I just came to see Bug. <laughs> and I would have her on the bridge tours, but we started to do about five tours a day. Mm -hmm. And after, after the second tour, you know what they say about working with kids and animals? Yeah. She's done. Hmm. I think there are so many superpowers that would just end up getting you into trouble, like being invisible. <laughs> oh, you'd probably see some things and hear some things that you wouldn't want to. So let's see, what would I want to do? I think I would want to be able to hold my breath underwater or breathe underwater. Oh, yeah. Um, in another life, I'm sure I was a mermaid. I must have been. Um, I have a tail on the ship that the mermaid comes out from time to time. So if I could spend all my time under the water, in yeah. the ocean, that would be a dream. I, I was born in San Francisco, um, which of course is a coastal mm -hmm. city, but I didn't grow up there. My dad, uh, we moved around a lot for his job. So I lived in Michigan, I lived in Texas, I lived in Georgia, London and ended up in Las Vegas, so mm. pretty landlocked. Um, but the lure of the ocean, the romanticism that's associated with the ocean, mm -hmm. I think that's what really got me when I was 12 years old, when we went on the first cruise that mm. my parents ever took us on. And that's where I said, I need a career at sea. Mm. But at the time I said I wanted to be the cruise director. Mm -hmm. And my dad said, you can do anything you want, you yeah. drive the thing. So I think, that being able to actually spend time on the ocean, that's where I actually fell in love with it. There's a couple of different things that really rock my world when grandparents come up and say they want to take a picture with me because they want to show their granddaughter. Yeah. Uh, and the same with parents. But then when little girls come up, um, you know, there was a little boy and he said to me, he, he was probably four years old, and he said, um, I have a book with ships. And I said, oh, that's really great. Can I see it? And he says, yeah. And I wanted to ask you because there's no girl captains in my book. And I thought that was really cute for him to pick up on. Mm -hmm. Um, and so hopefully meeting me, you know, put that mm -hmm. in the back of his brain, but the little girls are the best when they come up and, um, you know, there's not just being a captain, but there's also a feminine side, I think, that I can portray that they mm -hmm. can see, you know, and associate with what they already think is in their capability in the, mm -hmm. in the future because they're a girl. I had a preconceived notion what a female captain was. I didn't 
sail with any female captains when I was coming up through the ranks. Mm -hmm. So I just had this idea in my head about what I should be. And honestly, when I became captain, um, I really found myself. And I think that's, that's what I wish everyone would do. You know, no matter what their job or their career is, knowing who you are as a person and being able to be genuine mm -hmm. first and then find a way to work that into your career. When I was promoted as staff captain, the second in command, I was sent to Sweden for psychological evaluation. At the end of it, the gentleman sat down and he said to me, um, I think everything went fantastic. And you always know there's a but. but. And he said, but I find that you tend to smile too much. And I said, okay, mm -hmm. you know, if that's gonna be my flaw, that'll be my flaw. Mm -hmm. So I went home and I told my family and they said, well, you didn't have to go to Sweden to figure that out. We could have told you for free, <laughs> uh, but I filed it away. And then when it was time to go on my first ship as captain, I was leaving the house and my husband said to me, remember what they said in Sweden, don't smile. You won't be taken seriously. I said, okay, I've got this. Mm -hmm. And for the first two weeks, that's what I did. I tried not to smile. But when you've wanted something since you were 12 years old and it's finally come true, you can't help but smile. Mm -hmm. So after two weeks, I said, you know what? I'm gonna focus on the job. I'm gonna focus on the things that I know. Mm -hmm. And smiling was what I knew. Mm -hmm. So I said, sod it, I'm gonna be me. And honestly, the guests and, and the people that you work with, they pick up on that. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the keys to my success is just being myself. Mm -hmm. It would be, don't try to fit in mm -hmm. and just be yourself mm -hmm. um, because there's only one you. Yeah. yeah. Everybody else is everybody else. Um, you know, we're all unique in some way. Like everyone is special. And if we're just trying to be somebody else, then we're never going to be ourselves. My surprise would be that my alter ego is mermaid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Always travel with a few things on the ship. My hairless cat, my Louboutins, and my mermaid tail. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the mermaid tail is actually twofold. It's, um, it's fun, but it's also a way for me to get out and experience the incredible places that we get to go to mm -hmm. uh, all over, you know, the Caribbean, that tail scene, mm -hmm. every port. And is it, does it swim too? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's like a legit. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Not like a snuggie, no <laughs> snuggie tail. No, it's, it's, it's kind of a super sexy tail. I saw Captain Marvel, and you just you just kind of picture yourself in that role. Mm -hmm. um, I think because there are little girls and and little boys that look up to you because of your role and your responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, and also your willingness to want to do good mm -hmm. and make the world a better place. I think that would be my ideal superhero is Captain Marvel. Okay, you go to Sweden. The neat thing, uh, and I actually shared this with the female bridge officers that I work with is, I say you're always on. So, um, you know, when you come up to the bridge, make sure that you realize that if guests come up for a tour or whatever, that you're always on. They're going to put more focus on you because they're not used to seeing that and you're very special. Mm -hmm. um, and so 
one of the, the responsibilities that I have that's not written in my job description, but is representing, mm -hmm. um, representing women on board the ship, representing women in the role and being available to our guests. Um, you know, when I make announcements, English is my first language. And I think a lot of the time people are used to foreign captains. And um, so when they hear a female voice and an American female voice over the, the PA, they're really surprised. And so when they see me around the ship, they automatically have a connection to me because, you know, the, the, the majority of our guests mm -hmm. are from the States. And so they, um, they have a lot of questions and being able to be accessible for them, mm -hmm. I think is, is one of those roles that not everybody does but is one of the most rewarding mm. um, because when you're answering those questions you're also helping to smash those stereotypes right exactly yeah oh i love it it was definitely a marathon it wasn't a sprint and the funny thing is is it took 19 years to become a captain but it doesn't feel like that it's um my environment was always evolving. It was always a different ship, uh, different people. I was never working in the same place um, with the same people all the time. So the change of environment for me was always refreshing. And I know we change jobs quite a bit nowadays. You know, the average person will go through quite a few, few jobs. But um, the key to success and what I recommend for people stick it out a little bit longer mm -hmm. than you think that you can because the end result is going to be that you learn a lesson whether it's a good one or a bad one it's going to be a lesson I've worked with three types of captains, the good, the bad, and then the ones I didn't learn anything from. Mm -hmm. The good and the bad were fantastic, even the bad, because I learned something mm -hmm. from them. The ones that I didn't enjoy working with were the ones that didn't teach me anything. I didn't get any lessons out of them. And the longer you stay in a position, the more experiences you're going to have and that's just going to make you better at what you want to be. And I'm yeah. a true believer that everything happens for a reason, mm -hmm. um, but also success comes from persevering.